Queensland Raceway, round two of the Shannon's Trophy Series. Welcome back. The Gods of Thunder are on the track now and the most successful of those gods is in the front row of the grid. There he is, 11 times champion, Tony Riccadello. Right beside him is Steve Tomasi, pushed hard yesterday. Jordan Caruso succumbed to an issue yesterday. Ash Jarvis leading the championship coming into this round. Tony Cox, Curry, Michael Robinson in the 32. Humphrey in that a big menacing Falcon. Then we go back to two, another Falcon of Donnelly there as well Duggan in the Aston and away we go for race two oh, so of the weekend and Gary O'Brien right alongside me this is different how he started yesterday gets into the lead Jordan Caruso in the P2 yeah Riccadello was back to third after starting on pole in yesterday's race and one's gone off there in the background hopefully it's just on to the <laughs> There's Steve Tomasi trying to get past two. Caruso goes down the inside of Riccadello at turn three. Gets the lead away. Can he hold on to it? Riccadello comes back at him out of that corner, but he's on the wrong side of the track as they head up to turn four. Well, this is reminiscent of uh, seven or eight years ago. Hossack versus Riccadello. The same two cars in the, uh, the battle, and they are battling on cold tyres, both of them. This silhouettes match in the run between four and five, and Riccadello goes back into the lead in the, in the course of two corners here at Queensland Raceway. The Precision International Sports at Hands turning it on. And into turn six they go. Caruso right up the inside. Riccadello looks over and goes, Look, this out of you again. We have to keep doing this. Look at the power on that Alpha. He gets it down magnificently. I believe the issue yesterday with Jordan Caruso's Audi was a head of pipe issue, a uh, crack or something. I haven't actually had a chance to meet up with the team, but that was something, a rumour I heard down the back of the paddock area in between races oh. this morning. Riccadello running wide. He did it all day. He is absolutely exploring the grip uh, limitations. Now Caruso goes down the inside of turn three, and we have another lead change. Goes ahead of Riccadello. Riccadello will now have to fight back and try to go down the inside at four. It's no good going the outside unless you can stay out there. He gets alongside. This is something we haven't seen from the Alpha. It's got the straight line pace of the Audi. Well, wow, this is uh, this is the battles of old, isn't it? Look at Stephen Tomasi. He is just sitting back there, poised. His dad, Dan, will be pacing up and down the pit lane wall. He was beside himself with excitement after the race yesterday, albeit they didn't get the, the one. They came home in second place, but he was just frothing at the, the potential with sports at hands in season 2023. And I think we all are, guys. Yep. Now I think Riccadillo is just going to sit in behind him for, for a period. Maybe see if he's used up a bit more tyre. They only have eight tyres for the meeting. Four new, four used that they can use. Good look into the side window there of Tony Riccadillo's Alpha. Chevrolet powered. All built in-house at BMN Riccadillo. There's the Tomasi Calibra, the beautifully presented precision for all of your engine requirements. PrecisionInton.com, where you can catch it all out, and that is where this car absolutely sings. Great horsepower, always been produced by the Tomasi cars. Oh, understeer there for Tony Riccadello. He just caught that. He gave it an early turn in to try and gather up some real estate, but it bit him back there and he lost a bit of impotence. And you cannot be slow off turn five, heading up to six, otherwise you'll be exposed pretty much by the end of the front straight. You've got to carry it, sweeping it around turn six and carry it down the straight. Well, it's a racing free at the moment with Ash Jarvis protecting his series lead by just continually scoring good points. He is in fourth position in the Monaro Chev. I've spoken to the first three guys yesterday and that's not lost on them. <laughs> They're like, we've got to win races because Ash is just sitting there gathering up points as well. He, his car is not in the same horsepower league as these three. In fact, he's uh, 7.9 seconds off the back of the leader now. Coxie in the uh, Saab is 9.2 seconds off. We're getting good shots of them here. Michael Robinson, he's doing a brilliant job here again. A guy who has come second and third in the championship more, more times than he wants to even remember anymore. Here's Steve Lacey coming through the field, just got ahead, although Darren Curry's bringing the mark car down the inside. 
They're both trying to get past Mark Dagen in the ex Kerry Bailey Aston Martin Chev. Of course, most of the front running cars in this category are Chev powered. But that's apart from the Saab, which is running a Dodge engine. Well, look at this. This is a nice move here. Curry gets through on the 2012 championship winning car. Debuted in 2012 and won the championship in 2012. No one had an answer for it with Kerry when he came out, had they? And now Duncan comes back at the Coyote powered Mark car through turn six. They've got a new Mark car coming for Jeff Torn, which will be uh, a full sports sedan spec GT car, their latest innovation. Tim Tritton just in the background there, a car that was uh, driven by Scribblehead himself, Rand McGlurkin, who's covering off all the social medias for the uh, category. Had it for a year or two, moved it on, and these guys have given it a very, very happy birthday update in numerous areas. It's a, uh, it's a famous sports sedan. It's had numerous different owners um, across the years. James Phillip, I think um, Dean Cam as well. And uh, it's, it's a weapon. It really is. And the uh, more Tim gets used to it, the more that Honda will start to push up the field. Well, unfortunately, it pulled up in qualifying just the, on the outside of turn two and pulled up in the same place in the race. So it must have had something over there they needed to retrieve. Not sure about that, but good dice here between Curry and Duggan. And now Triton moving in onto the back of the Aston as well. Steve Lacey, of course, didn't finish yesterday. Had fuel boil in that car. Yeah, that was an interesting conversation because they were pulling the car apart and they'd actually taken the uh, heat shield out. Have a look at that, a 108-1054. Uh, that's a shame. This Travis is a Condon. really in 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 interesting iteration on a sports sedan. A uh, little Corolla with an LS type engine in the front of it. Ran, um, ran some sort of, I guess, junior sports sedan type series, some more, more freedoms like a tin top yeah, category. Safety car out for this. It has too. There's that big uh, XD Falcon. Wow, powered they, again. Wow, they travel some distance too. <laughs> they, go, they come from Western Australia as well. I think it was coming over on the back of a. Uh, I don't know, like a high ace delivery van or something like that they were towing it over with. And fantastic, we're starting to rack them up here. And this can be a part of uh, sports and ends. That's Anthony Saint in the uh, Mazda RX-7. And uh, he is He's parked a local. Up. And Triton's joined him over there as well. So Both locals, actually. Triton, I thought he's from Victoria. And uh, there's Condon. I guess that's the one that's probably in the dangerous spot coming off that uh, yeah. previous corner that car there. Had, uh, lost a pressure relief valve out of the sump in Friday practice, and they thought their weekend was done, but they managed to get it going again and took in race one. Unfortunately, not so much in race two. So let's hope it's just a hook and run for these cars to get them into safety. What happens when we go back to greens? We've got the top three line astern and it'll be on well i tell you what i'm going to throw a bit of a, a a wild one amongst this i'm going to say watch michael robinson and humphrey and chris donnelly all sitting in six seven and eight they've they've essentially seen the leaders drive away from them they've now got them back in sight and they're going to try and not let them skip away they're, going with them is going to be hard I let, think, let's face it i think the one that um that impressed me most out of race one was um, tony cox in the saab who would have thought that that car, you know, given on past performances, could have been in fifth spot? Certainly, yeah. Well, it, it was a, a front-running car back in the day in the Mike Imry era, but uh, I was most impressed with that guy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> old 11 times. So he just, you know, like age does not weary him. He's And he's not even old yet. He's just been around for a long, long time. It just seems he? like he's been going since, well, since he was born. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And look... I've gone on the record many times as soon as he decides to stop driving that car and I nearly went over and over during COVID and took it off him and put it in a humidity crib and uh, hoisted it up on top of a building somewhere so we can all uh, pray to the gods of sports sedans but uh, he's got his work cut out for him a couple of old heads some old war horses from uh, sports sedans yesterday were not left scratching their head they were going Tony is just messing with them he is just he'll, he'll be able to come up to the rise to the top before the end of the weekend. They said, I don't know, he's working very hard. And they're like, yeah, he's working hard, but you just watch, watch Tony race. My apologies, uh, Triton is actually a Queenslander. 
But I wanted to mention the, the Saab again because it's Dodge powered and uh, one of the guys who's watching in is, is Paul Boschert <laughs> in Canberra who has a Dodge powered Corvette. Well, that's an interesting rebuilt and hopefully we'll see that one out before the end of the season. <laughs> just so that everyone knows, you've got a Valiant uh, parked <laughs> in your driveway, so you're a Mopar <laughs> guy, just like on the Shannon's insurance ad. I'm a Mopar guy through and through. Gary O'Brien. Ray Hislop going through the screen there as well. Great to see Ray finding a happy home in sports sedans. He was a, a dominant force amongst a controversial era in improved production racing. But uh, we're going to have a, a chat to him on the uh, the Grassroots Racing podcast in the not-too-distant future. So keep an eye out on that on the Speed Cafe podcasts because uh, it's a very interesting story uh, to tell for Ray Hislop. But he's, uh, he's here next weekend racing. And he wanted to be here this weekend so he could qualify to get on uh, the final round of the championship, round five, which will be held at Boost Gold Coast on October 27, 29. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. I bet you will. Well, for the first time in, I can't remember how long, a full national sports at Anfield will be welcome to the Bathurst 1000 in October 5 to 8. Yeah, indeed. And then on the Gold Coast, it's been a long time since these tyre cars have raced on the Gold Coast. Yeah. Well, we both those tracks, both yeah. you know, iconic Australian tracks. Um, here this weekend, this track has been suited overtime to, to Tony Riccadello, um, but he has got a couple of young guns. Tomasi is now a multiple uh, champion of the category, and, uh, of course, number one leading the race. Jordan Caruso won the last uh, Australian championship as well. So uh, Tony has got, as I said, 11 times championships and that is a world record that is in the Guinness Book of World Records well, it's in for the Guinness FIA. Book, of Re Book of Records when he got to eight. Yes it was. <laughs> Just keeps that to keep reprinting, didn't it? <laughs> Being that the CAMS and Motorsport Australia events are FIA accredited, that's where the, the record can uh, be uh, absorbed or uh, displayed and uh, you can't take those championships off Tony Riccadello. It is... Um, it's just something to be really in awe of, isn't it? Safety car lights out. So and interestingly to enough, Tony doesn't wear it as a badge of honour. Tony's there for this race and to win this race, yeah. isn't he? Well, he's the car. He preps all that car himself, does all the work on it. Spent a long time over the off season getting it ready for this championship, and you can see it's all worked so far. It certainly has. A couple of different iterations on gearboxes, Hollinger's H6, uh, sequentials, Modena six speeds, Tremex, and uh, uh, we're going through. And we are away. The ground thumps. The gods of thunder race a one more time here for today. But we have got four, five more, no, four more laps to go in this one. And Jordan Caruso has got the forever in the mirror. The snake, look at the snake's eyes. I love that on the front of the elf with the twin headlights with that, uh, those uh, snake eyes on there. And he charges them. Tomasi not being able to go with them. The, the guys that um, come here with a different brake oh, setup. Oh, no. Fircher off the road in the Chef Powered Toyota 86. And he's not moving. Not the only one of those being currently built out there for Australian sports sedans. There is another Toyota 86. And, oh, as, uh, no, we're under yellow. So Tony Riccadello wants to be uh, very careful. He's just noticed the yellow come out, so he has pulled back in behind Jordan Caruso. That's not what we wanted to see here. These cars are, are not displayed well under safety car. They are displayed well when they're allowed to run wild out there in the environment. And that is exactly what they are. I would encourage you to check it all out on their social medias at National Sports Sedan Series. And uh, we see the cars coming around. There's the Humphrey car as well. Here's the back end of that. And the 86 just came into screen, unfortunately. Uh, not really giving us an indication of what had happened there. But came in out of position number 12, was in position number 12. So not mucking around, getting on with it there. And uh, Tony Cadello is going to have to hustle on here to get onto the back of uh, this, because there it is, it's up and out. And, uh, gee, I hope we can get that away because uh, we don't want to suffer too many more laps under safety car. Front splitters are good for picking up all the gravel. Oh, they're they? terrific, aren't they? <laughs> and, then, and then distributing all over <laughs> the track as they leave. That's, uh, that's been a quick recovery. Which it is certainly good. has. There's been some uh, Motorsport Australia officials brought in from all over the country to uh, work with the recoveries on the, uh, the trophy series because it is the biggest absorber of race time. 
and uh, we don't want to lose time because of that. 47 there, that's the Fergus Coots car. This was a car that was run over a decade ago with his dad. And uh, they are out there running around, albeit down the tail end of a national end, national field. They are in the race and uh, Ash pushing Bright, hard. Ash Bright just ahead of him. That's an X supercar, that, uh, but it runs an LS in it, so. Sadly, just noticed the yellow car of Nick Smith, the number 69, has gone to uh, Pit gone mate. to the pits, and uh, wow, there's a guy that I don't know how how we can keep him motivated. Oh. It just seems to be, and he does. He, he took credit to himself and his wife and his kids. Uh, you know, he, he, he often remarks, "Gee, I'm so lucky to have the family I've got." His dad heavily involved in it as well, of course, a, a racer as Paul well. Former racer Graham Smith had a Fiat 131 Turbo in racing New South Wales. Sports are dance for many years back in the Oran Park and Amaru Park days. Now it looks like we're going to go again, Gaz. That's the zone of the track where the safety car should be turning out its lights. So, uh, what does that leave us with? It will leave us with. We're on lap 10 at the moment. Yeah. Uh, so it's still Crusoe from Riccadello, Tomasi, Jarvis, Cox, Robertson, Humphrey, Donnelly, Steve Lacey up to ninth from the rear of the field, Curry in tenth. Then well, it's Doug and Hislop, Jake Camilleri, we haven't mentioned, he's in the Mark I Mazda. Matt Longhurst from South Australia in the Time Attack Honda Integra. He is currently running in a 14th position. Now we've got Ash Bright and Coots, the two that we previously we just mentioned at the back of the field, just in front. Oh, I know Furch has gone to the pit, so he's obviously uh, called it a day in this one. Looks like uh, Tim Tritton in the Honda as well has ailed there because he's not showing in the pits, but not yeah, but he's parked. the field. He and Tony Saint are parked off together. Yeah, that's right, sorry. I'd try and keep up with that. The 43 there as well, a number that Alan Moffat made very famous. And uh, in behind there as well is Mark Duggan. And uh, we're just being informed that possibly this is going to finish on this lap here. So we will uh, we'll continue to run down through the field. Disappointing end for everyone competing in the Precision National Sports Sedan Series. PrecisionIntel.com for all of your engine componentry and parts. Make sure you uh, talk to the people at Precision. They know exactly what you need when you're trying to go fast, that is for sure, or trying to go reliably as well. So uh, make sure you give them the chance to be part of uh, your automotive experience and uh, let them know that you were watching the Shannon's Trophy Series and you saw uh, Stephen Tomasi racing in the Precision Intel Calibra. He represents the brand very, very well indeed. There's the Elcor property developer's car of Jordan Caruso, who will, I guess, if we go to the chequered flag behind safety car, will inherit himself a, uh, a, a worthy win in, uh, in the series. And uh, Tony Rigadello as well. Ash Jarvis, P4, <laughs> just dragging those points Tony in. Cox in fifth and Michael Robertson in sixth. So that's, that's a good uh, mix of cars on pretty even pace in that group. So if I get some full laps in the, in the next race, which is the last race on the program this afternoon. There it is, the chequered flag, Ryan Humphrey for Carlton Wines out of Western Australia, representing very, very well. And I hope they're all very happy with his rapport or his performance here so far this weekend. Coming home seventh place and the cars in front of him is absolutely uh, no disgrace. In fact, that is something to hang your hat on. Mm. Um, they've done a terrific job. As the cars finish off the race, it'll be Jordan Caruso that takes the win for race number two for the weekend. And the cars just making their way back to uh, the pits now. Tony Riccadello pulling up alongside and just, just letting, acknowledging the, the race win, which uh, he's had to do that a number of times over the years with Darren Hossack at the wheel and Jack Perkins at the wheel of the John Gawley and owned Audi. Round of applause from our volunteer officials trackside. They always appreciate the uh, the big bangers coming trackside here to uh, Queensland Raceway. 
I guess uh, ruining what could have been a full um, a full race distance there. The um, the programmed 13 laps certainly didn't uh, come about. 11 is they got to be happy with, and uh, this is where the the stories can start. <laughs> Tony Riccadello, who learned off Kerry Bailey, just get straight in their ear and start talking to them and uh, learn more about their car than they'll off, will off you. I remember Tony Riccadello saying that that that. Uh, Pouch or Kerry Bailey was the master of that. He'd just talk to you, keep talking and talking until he'd get out of you. What, what, what was going on? Well, every time I ever went to speak to him, he'd, the first thing you'd ask is, what, 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 what was Tony running? Yeah, was Tony, what, what did Tony what? say? <laughs> <laughs> Jordan Caruso takes the win over Tony Riccadello. Steve Tomasi, Ash Jarvis in the 44 is in a very happy fourth place there. Tony Cox, Michael Robinson, Ryan Humphrey, Chris Donnelly, Steve Lacey and Darren Curry. Fastest lap on a 108.1054. That goes to uh, Jordan Caruso. The lap record is still 107, and that is held by Thomas Randall in the Saab. We'll go down to pit lane now to Speed Cafe Victory Lane with Dean Herridge. Yes, happy Jordan Caruso. Uh, obviously, a bit disappointing to finish under yellow, but it wins the win. Great uh, opening duel in those first couple of laps. Yeah, that was awesome. That was definitely the best battle I've had in, in sports and so far. Um, awesome race with Tony. You know, it was, it was hard, but fair and that's what you want um the car was yeah it was wicked i think um it would have been interesting to see how it played out with tires i think you know tony does a really good job of sort of managing the end of the race but um nah stoked with that awesome race so obviously the repairs overnight worked a treat so team must be happy about that yeah we had um a bunch of people helping out um you know welding whatever was broken but um yeah nah stoked to, to get the car back out and hopefully we can have a good race three well the good news for us is there is a race three and obviously uh, do you think you can hold these couple of guys back it's going to be tough. Um, I mean, they're both really quick, but I think as long as we've got the car and I just got to minimise mistakes, I think we should be good. All right, plenty of pressure on. Well done for this one. As we get Tony across, congratulations. Good luck in race three. Tony, I feel like he's probably a little disappointed that uh, you probably had a run planned, no doubt, knowing you, but uh, obviously finished under yellow. But uh, it's going to be a good cracking run between the three of you guys, isn't there? Yeah, look, it was a good battle. I think the safety car let Geordie off pretty, um, <laughs> pretty on the on the light side. But... Um, Mate, look, you know, we made some big changes last night and I think it sort of helped, you know, the track changed quite a bit yesterday and we, I think we found a pretty good setup and the battle was on later in the race, but, um, you know, you just got to thank Precision uh, Parts and um, the Duggan family as well, Hotel, you know, they're putting a big effort in the support in the category and, I mean, great race and great cars and great people, mate, so it's really enjoyable. We're absolutely enjoying as well. Now, I spoke to you a couple of hours ago and you're always just tinkering away. You're always trying to make it a little faster. So you made improvements last night. You got anything up your sleeve that you need to play around with before the race three? Uh, yeah, look, we're, we're pretty close, I think. Um, probably going to be, we'll, we'll have another reset and think, um, you know, this afternoon at three o'clock in the Arvo, the track will change again. So we've got to just manage manage the changes and try to get the best um, that we can out of the car for the track condition. So, but uh, no, it should be exciting. It's going to be on. We're going to be excited for it, mate. Good luck with that one. Like I said, well done for P2 and a win yesterday, of course. So it's all, all the play for coming up. No worries. Thanks. Good on you, Steve. Come in uh, third. Didn't see you in the mix yesterday. Didn't quite have them today. Have you got anything up your sleeve for this afternoon? Uh, this race, we tried to play a bit of the long game with the tyre pressures. And uh, if the safety cars weren't there, maybe I could have caught up on that ground that I would lose early on um, which was all sort of part of the plan but um, unfortunately that's racing and the strategy didn't go to plan but no I was doing I was on the pace and uh, feeling good and uh, this is sort of like the closest I've been to these guys in a little while um, so yeah race three should be pretty exciting. And the thing is you are so close yesterday's your fastest lap time between you was like a tenth of a second apart so you're all are trying to find a little sneak somewhere like you said you tried a bit of strategy there so it's fantastic competition we love them watching it. Yeah, no, the car's great. The engine's even better. Um, thanks to Precision International for their um, for the, en the engine parts that they're supplying us. They're, they're unbelievable and their service. Um, all the questions are getting answered and um, it's all coming together. Well done for the P3. Can't wait for the next race. No, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Cars on track now for the final race of the weekend. The shadows are starting to go longer on the track here. And... Uh, Fantastic to invite out onto the track, the Precision International or PrecisionIntel.com National Sports Vans Series. And uh, they will be getting underway very, very soon indeed. Let's have a look as they roll out. There's Ray Hislop in the uh, X Supercar. He's getting some good, valuable miles in here this weekend, racing here next weekend as part of the Speed Series in the Berlin Touring Cars. So uh, he's having a really good look at Q1 
you are over there, uh, the next week as well. So um, he keeps uh, keeps motoring out on the uh, on the track as well. And here is the track map here at Queensland Raceway. Turn one, fast bump right on the entry there. It's almost like a mogul's course on a snow skiing track or snow skiing mountain. Turn two, fast. You've got to carry the speed all the way down here. Hard under brakes into turn three. Go wide, go short, and then it all starts to fight out on this shoot up to turn number four. And this short little technical shoot up to turn number five. Carry so much speed as you possibly can. And that's what it's like here, getting out of all these 90 degree corners at Queensland Raceway. It's about carrying the pace all well, like, the way through. They call it the pavement clip. It looks simple. It certainly isn't. That's right. 3.1 kilometres been open since 1999. Six corners. And the lap record has stood ever since that first weekend with Simon Wills in a, in a Formula Holden. And the Formula Holden were good at point and shoot. Cars forming up now on the front row of the grid. It'll be Jordan Caruso taking pole position next to Tony Riccadello. And we have Stephen Tomasi for Precision International in car number nine out of three. Four is Ashley Jarvis playing a long game in 2023. Series points leader as he is, and he's continuing to hold that lead. Tony Cox out of five, stopped on the slow down lap with a fuel pump issue in the last one. Michael Robertson, Ryan Humphrey, and Chris Donnelly round out the top eight. Miss Donnelly in that Falcon just coming into screen now. The Mark car, which was the next one through there, is Curry, then Duggan, Ray Heeslop, Jake Camilleri, we haven't seen much of. Longhurst, Bright, Coots, Fetcher, Triton, Condon, I'm not sure he's got out there, and Nick Smith, I'm not sure he's got out there as well. I can't see the bright yellow, maybe there it is, bobbing around. No, that is Stephen Lacey, but they're away. And, uh, getting desperate. In that, fact, I think he's had an extra reef at the wheel to get over there. I think it threw it sideways just very briefly and he managed to salvage it. It's maybe he hasn't torn a tyre at all. Oh, yeah. But Tomasi's still blood in the water. Now he's going straight out after them. And this trio are already pushing on. Have a look at Coxie in the Saab. He's found some uh, impetus. Ryan Humphrey up the inside there on Michael Robinson in the big silver number 30. And that car has got all horsepower on board. Certainly has. And Duggan in there behind him, followed by Donnelly. Steve Lacey after a DNF and race one coming back up through the order. But uh, off the start there, Tomasi tried to thread the needle, go past the first two, but the door was shut on him. And then, of course, we've seen uh, Riccadello had that little moment out of turn one that almost pitched the car sideways. Ray Hislop or Jake Camilleri have gone off wide there and Ray following him coming around turn number five. Lots of uh, dust in the air now. Let's see Lacey. He goes through and uh, makes up a spot on Donnelly. There's a couple of New South Wales protagonists doing a... Uh, working pretty hard on each other here at the moment. They've come north for the weekend to do the National Series and uh, they're working very, very hard. Right in front is Duggan in the Aston Martin as well. We had a, a bit of a look in there in the last break around there with, uh, with Dean Ridge. And uh, certainly a, a great build and a really special car in the Australian motorsport landscape. Lacey finally got past Donnelly. He did it down the back straight, got a good run out of turn two, carried the momentum down to three. Now he's got to try and get past someone he, know, he knows pretty well. Races against him in the State Series in New South Wales at just about every round. That's Mark Duggan in the Aston Martin. Gee, that car 30, it's a lot of car to push through the air, isn't it? Chasing down Michael Robinson in that iconic Australian coupe shape that Ash Jarvis is also deploying in this series, the Monaro. It's a big, big car, that one, isn't it? Still Cox leads them as well, so it's... Caruso in front, Riccadello second, and there's Tomasi, Jarvis, Cox, which we've just been looking at then, this big group in behind him, and look how big a group it is, and someone's a, a fairly big tile look up down there, and that corner that's out of our side at the moment, here comes Matt Longhurst on Ash Bright, trying to get around him, Longhurst in the time attack, Andrew Integra. It's done really well, actually. It doesn't seem to have been fragile at all. It's held in there. Yeah, Tony uh, Saint back. We suspect that he may have had a uh, drive issue. They had the car jacked up at the back after that last session when he... Uh, the it's a V8 RX7, uh, RX7, not a rotary-powered RX7. Yeah, decent one. <laughs> 
So Caruso still leading the way out in front to Riccadello. In fact, he has opened up a 1.7 second lead as Jordan Caruso. Tomasi is a further second and a half back there as well. So the front three cars, this is a drive by there in the 21. Does it brilliantly, does Longhurst, goes through on Bright and uh, takes that position. Gee, that Honda's got some sniff on board, doesn't it, Gaz? Yeah, two and a half litre Honda engine, certainly working well. Caruso, a 106.96, a 106.96, that's uh, eclipsing the lap record set by Thomas Randall of a 107.32. Off the timing screen there, that is a massive move, 0.4 of a second. 0.3 of a second there in the lap record. So has he got the Audi working in the window? Oh, yes. Right now he does. Yeah, that is amazing. 1.9 seconds to lead over Tony Riccadello in the red Alpha. Here's Stephen Lacey working onto the uh, Aston Martin, the Duggan family hotels. So nothing wrong with the Aston Martin in the straight line, but runs a bit wide out of turn three. Lacey gets alongside him, but the Aston Martin will come back at him. Duggan regathers that spot. They're fighting over eight position at the moment. Stephen Lacey, a multiple uh, state champion in New South Wales, runs the uh, combined sedans events at the at Mount Panorama at different race race weddings through the year. Looks to the inside now, the Aston doesn't get through. He has now got the problem coming in from behind with Chris Donnelly. And then uh, after Donnelly is Curry in that Mark Mustang. This may be his opportunity, but I don't think it has a straight line sniff. That proves to be correct there when he uh, just can't do it. But he'll get, he might get him at turn two if he sneaks, sneaks up the inside. Again, he's got a long straight to negotiate, and it's just not helping the Chef Camaro pilot at this stage. Big shout out to Shane Bradford just leading the Camaro there. Would have been great to have the uh, Queenslander out on track with us here this weekend. Flames flying out of the Chris Donnelly Falcon. Apparently race cars with flames go faster. Couldn't agree more. <laughs> Certainly more spectacular. Indeed. And with our overcast conditions we have, they show up a little bit better as well. They certainly do. Six of the 13 laps completed now by our race leaders. So coming up to half race distance on this lap. And at the moment, Jordan Caruso has just done a 106.83. He's taken another 1.15 of a second off that lap record. And Riccadello's done a 178. So well. he's gone under the previous lap record yeah. of uh, Thomas Randall. Well, Randall will be in the next round here when Adelaide race again. He uh, fronted up to Sandown after someone beat it and did his lap record at the state round. And uh, I dare say, Dean and Thomas will be watching this. Big shout out, guys. There it is. There's the new lap record. Maybe. Oh, Chris wow. Donnelly's. Oh, oh Lacey's going. slowing. Oh, yeah, He's not Curry happy either. Oh, that's not good. Curry on the. trying to get in the inside of Donnelly at turn three. So that's a Ford with a Chev in it and a Ford with a Ford in it. Yeah, well, indeed. Albeit a space frame for Spoke to uh, sports with a yeah. Ford body over it. Mark II Mustang. Mark II, the Mark Company will be producing uh, a new Mark II Mustang, which will have a Chev in it and will be totally sports sedan compliant. It'll be called the GTSS. This is our race leader now has reset the lap record twice over the last six laps, so he has got the car operating right in the window he wants to. Tony Riccadello, 11 times national champion in the category, 2.6 seconds further behind. Traditionally, Gaz, you'd have to say that that's pretty much over in a sports sedan race, but this car has thrown up some curly ones at Jordan this weekend, and one was a, a header issue. Oh, Ray. This off having a moment down at that's turn rare. six. That's very rare. Maybe. And doesn't make mistakes. Oh, and Lacey off to the pits. So. There's our race leader coming through now and Ray Hislop. So that lead looks to have come back a little bit over the last lap or so. What's this lap time for Jordan? It's a 108. So he's backed off at a second and a half on that last lap. And that's Ward Riccadello into two seconds. So 
I said it's almost over, but it's not, no. is it? We're back to within two seconds of each other at the front of this race. The Earl Core property oh. developments Audi. The B&M Riccadello. Alpha out of Western Australia. I wonder if Caruso's just backed off to give the tyres a bit of a breather so he can have another stab at the outright lap record. Or have a stab at fending off Tony Riccadello for the next uh, six laps or so. Oh, Steve. Michael Robinson. Robinson. Robinson in dramas. The coaching room outfit from Bell Real Estate and the Dandenong Rangers in near Melbourne. And this battle continues without Lacey, but certainly we have Donnelly and Curry there. Oh, Chris Donnelly's been driving really well and got this car really just percolating along nicely. To be able to drive up to the back of that Aston Martin like that, you've got your car operating nicely. We haven't seen it, but uh, Alan, uh, Ash Jarvis has lost fourth position to Tony Cox in the Saab. Look at that. This is going to be a change of position here now, so this will see P7 go to Chris Connolly, and it does. So Douglas has been running wide out of turn three on every lap, and this time Donnelly took advantage of it. And looks like Curry's about to do something very yeah, similar. Yeah, looks like it might be a handling issue with the Aston there. Just having problems on the corner exit. Here's this battle for fourth position, Cox and Jarvis. Dodge Power versus Chef Power. doesn't want to blot his copybook for fourth places, does he? That, well, uh, it, it, one position won't hurt his championship lead. I guess you've got to keep that at the back of your mind. He's had two fourths. And if he gets a fifth in this one, it's better than the two fifths and a fourth that Cox will have. Better than a poke in the eye, hey? <laughs> Anything's better than a poke no, in the eye. That's true. That is true. T-Pole number 44 car. We haven't seen a lot of it. Colin Warren Smith owned outfit. And Colin was done with sports sedans and Warren said, I'm not. <laughs> Let's get a driver into this thing. And uh, I've got to say they've been duly rewarded with, uh, with Ash. First question I asked Ash was, uh, what modifications did you have to do to adjust the car seating position from Colin, who's a bigger, taller fella, and Ash is, uh, is a slighter, shorter bloke. Oh, and he comes, he goes off. I was just going to say, what an effort he's put in. Well, he has. He's just going to have to put it back in again. I did see uh, down there working on the car was Jeff Barnes. Yeah, fantastic to see Barnes back at the track again. Yeah. That, that old um, Pontiac of his will live on. Oh, Chris Donnelly's gone into the pits as well. That's got a what if that's whole got an lot of smoke drama. flaming out. Yeah, it looked like it, didn't it? If you filled the cockpit like that. This R little RX-7, normally aspirated twin rotor. Yes, there's a fire with that's that car. That's definitely a fire. He's out. So uh, that's good. Can't see any flames. There's a lot of smoke there. Acrid smoke going up into the air. It's a wrong colour smoke. It's not nice, is it? No. No, no that's not nice. Smouldering that one there. Let's uh, see as our timing screen starts to glitch out. Takes the last race of the weekend to not perform the job we need it to. Lap so number 10. Caruso leads. Stephen Tomasi in the lane now. <laughs> Oh no, out of P3. The timing screen's telling us that Stephen Tomasi has come to the lane. Can't see from all the smoke that's uh, going up there with the Donnelly car. But the uh, timing screen is telling me well, mine isn't. that Tomasi's in the <laughs> lane. So, well, yeah, I said it's getting glitchy, but uh, I'm, ho I'm hoping I'm wrong. I'm hoping that the screen's wrong. But uh, that looks like that fire is being attended to now. Well done to Chris to bring the car into safety and get himself out of it at the moment. Jordan Caruso now has just eased the lead of this race back out to 2.7 seconds. And uh, last time round of 108.5. Yeah, Tomasi is in the lane. So we've got Caruso in in front from Riccadello, Jarvis third, Cox in fourth, Ryan Humphrey fifth in the Falcon. And there's the Falcon. flag too. Fire trucks heading into the pit lane as well. So there's more drama of field going on down there, Gaz. Um, didn't quite see the, the run. Oh, there we go. That's uh, certainly smouldering away there. 
So, the final race of the weekend and the new lap record holder at Queensland Raceway, part of the Shannon's Trophy Series, will be Jordan Caruso in the John Gawley owned Audi. Tony Riccadello threw everything at it. He took a couple of race wins, but you and I know Tony well enough, Gaz, that he'll have a furrowed brow after that one. Yeah, he probably was expecting a better result than uh, a couple of seconds today. And I guess um, he'll work on that before the next round, which is at Sydney Motorsport Park on the second weekend of September. There's our driver of that car. So he's out getting a uh, cold drink. So a couple of the opposition crews just talking to him, checking up he's OK. So that's the... Uh, the Duggan crew down yeah, there helping that is out. the Duggan crew. That's Travis Condon right there. Was racing uh, earlier today in the Green Corolla in Sports Sedan. So he's been down there to lend a hand as well. There's Tony Riccadello as our big bangers. The Gods of Thunder make their way back into pit lane. Gaz, that will see the final on-track action for us for the weekend. And in true Sports Sedan final, never short of drama towards well, the end of the race, eh? Hey? It certainly did. And um, Tomasi actually pulled up behind the Falcon which is interesting. So yeah, he has. He's pulled up um, at the entry there. So yep. that's a shame. That is a, a real shame. Those guys put a lot of work into not just getting their own car here, but getting everyone here. Well, well, as you related earlier, Daniel Tomasi, that's Steve's father, was just beside himself yesterday about how enthusiastic it was to see such great racing. Correct. Even though his son finished third in that race and led it in the early stages. What this does is gives Ash Jarvis a step on the podium. It does. Nice points but he's had for overall, him. Yeah, well, overall, he'll he'll finish third overall for the round. Yeah. So keeps his uh, keeps his hopes alive, doesn't he? Keeps breathing life into it, and that's what you've got to do in uh, in a championship sense in the Precision International National Sports Sedan Series. I am surprised to see a lap record this weekend. I'm not surprised that the lap record is Jordan Caruso. Um, but, boy, that will light the fire under the, the Randall family. They're very proud of their lap records. Here they are, final results. Jordan Caruso takes the win for this afternoon over Tony Riccadello, who has travelled a long way to get here. Ash Jarvis steps up onto the podium. He'll be very, very proud of himself. Jordan Caruso, a new lap record of 106.83. There goes Jake Camilleri returning to the back of the pits in the Grand Prix Mazda Sports Sedan. Does uh, much and varied racing, doesn't he, Jake Camilleri? He certainly does. Uh, production cars even had a run in RX-8 Cup yes, recently. Yes, yep, does a lot of racing. Mm. And uh, the drivers are out of the cars down there. We will uh, confirm the rest of the finishes there. Jordan getting a uh, bit of a cuddle there. So he's pretty happy with that. Getting a lap record, Gaz puts, uh, pumps your boots up, doesn't it? Makes you feel 10 feet tall. <laughs> pumps your boots up, yep, yeah, well done. <laughs> Certainly does. Go from five foot eight to six foot two, and more. <laughs> it's uh, amazing. Tony sent straight over and given Jordan a congratulations too. So that's a testament to uh, the series as well that they can can uh, congratulate each other. And for the final for the final race of the weekend of the uh, national sports sedans, we're not too far away from getting down and talking to our winners down there in pit lane. So Ash Jarvis confirmed onto the podium in the uh, T-Fault Monaro. And uh, we look down to Dean Herridge with our race winner. Happy with that. Um, the car was awesome. Um, obviously, thanks to, to everyone who, um, you know, helps with getting the car as good as it is, um, you know. Uh, I was really happy with the lap and stoked to get the lap record. Tony, you know, pushed me right to the end, obviously. <laughs> he's, um, you know, he's, he's never going to give up. But, um, no, nah, really happy with the, the weekend. Sort of slowly chipped away at it, got better and better. And, um, yeah, couldn't be happier. Car just seemed to be in the window. Once you got a little bit of a gap, was that the aim to go for the lap record at all or not? Um, it wasn't the aim, but I, I knew it was there and I knew we could do it. So I was definitely pushing for it. And, um, yeah, the car, the tyres held on really well. So I was sort of able to keep pushing. Um, but, yeah, no, nah, stoked. You seem like you got better and better, mate. Well done on a fabulous uh, three race. I know uh, yesterday I was in Go Your Way, but two wins today, magic. Yeah, thank you so much. And thanks to Precision International and uh, Duggan Family Homes. Yeah, good on you, mate. Thank you so much. And we'll invite Tony over to have a chat. Of course, uh, the West Oz be gallant in defeat, but, mate, just couldn't catch him on that one. He was fast. Yeah, mate, look, credit to the guys. Um, 
you know, John and John and um, Jordan and the boys there. Um, you know, obviously they're bringing the A game, and that's what we want. You, you got to win, and you got to win um, against the best, you know. And um, today it wasn't to be, but made made a couple of rookie rookie mistakes or old man mistakes or something, whatever you want to call it. But um, you know, we've we found a little bit of pace, and I think um, hopefully by Eastern Creek we'll get a bit more, and uh, it'll be on again. So you're blaming? Is a little bit in the car, a little bit in you as well? You reckon? Oh, look. That, there's definitely always some in the drive. You always look back and you think, oh, I could have this, could have that, you know what it's like. Um, but, you know, I made a couple of small mistakes and, you know, you lose a car length and then you do another one, you lose another car length and you don't get the traffic at the right time and all those little things, you know, you, it plays into the result. So, but anyway, look, it's what it is, mate. The boys uh, from WA, we work hard all the time and, you know, the Alpha... Uh, Gives us a lot of work to do when, when uh, between seasons and between uh, race meetings. But, you know, good effort by the boys. And thanks again to all the guys at, uh, in the Sports Stand Series, uh, Precision International and, and the Duggan family. You know, obviously without them, again, we wouldn't be here. So it's the, the year's building up. Yeah, it certainly is, mate. It's going to be a climax to the end of the year. Mate, congratulations and uh, well done for a great job today. No worries. Thanks, Dean. Cheers. Right, we want Ash James comes across. Well done, Ash, um, on the podium, and uh, you were fighting hard the whole weekend, mate. It's a nice little, little uh, bit of sugar at the end of the uh, weekend. Oh, look, I don't think I've ever been so happy to finish in <laughs> third place. I thought I was running around in fourth, and then Coxie got me there, and I was running around in fifth, and then he ran off. And um, Look, Tony, Warren, Colin, they've been working tirelessly on this car. You know, we know we're not as fast as the big three. Um, you know, it's actually a credit to be on the on the track to, you know, following these guys around. They're putting on a pretty good show, and I'm in the best seat in the house. <laughs> It's a bit like that, isn't it? Are you sort of are you learning and getting little tips here? I mean, your car's fast as well, so you're you're gaining every uh, every lap. Oh, look, honestly, I'm putting in qualifiers every lap to stay in front of the rest. Um, I know we don't quite have that car space, but the guys, like I said, back in the in the workshop, they're chipping away at it, and you know, hopefully by the end of the year, you know, we're we're getting closer and we're getting closer. Qualifying laps, that's a lot of laps to do around that qualifying pace, you'd be worn out. Yeah, I'm knackered, I'm knackered. Um, just want to say a huge uh, hello and a thanks to my wife, my mum and my three beautiful girls at home that are unfortunately quite sick and couldn't make it here this weekend. Uh, good on you, Ash Jarvis. Well done for a podium to finish the weekend. As you said, all smiles. Happy, thank you.